Hey guys and welcome back to the channel and of course welcome back to the 365 days of Forex series. This is of course episode 12 as the title suggested and that means only one thing. You may have missed out on 11 videos from the series already which are jam packed full of useful information that you need to know before even thinking about flexing that trade and view plus membership that you got on a 6% discount after threatening to cancel your trial. If you've already watched those videos then be sure to give yourself a pat on the back and while you're doing that be sure to pat your mouse and keyboard whilst you like and subscribe to this video. Now I've got the house keeping out of the way and the waffle has been waffled, let's get into today's tutorial on Trade and View. So guys, to save you precious time, I've timestamped this video on the play bar so that you can skip through the specific parts of the video that you maybe don't know. Or if you want to be a legend then feel free to ignore those and just watch all of it as you never know you might actually miss something otherwise. So here we are on the main screen of Trading View, and as you can see the main screen is pretty busy and if we start from the top of the screen there is a ticker which shows the popular assets and how they're moving at the moment, whether they're up or down on the day and what percentage increase or decrease we've seen on that day. Below that we have the main banner which has the headings Ideas, Markets, Scripts, Screener, Streams, Brokers, Chart. And if you weren't already bored of me listening what you can read on the screen, there's of course more hover I'll let you check those out in your free time. Pretty much the only option that I use is the chart option as I don't care much about seeing publicly posted ideas as other traders aren't likely to be using my strategy so without sounding too arrogant I don't really care what they're doing and neither should you. Let's head into the charts and get into the juicy stuff. Now if this is your first time on TradingView then you'll be taken to this screen chart which you can see is the stock price of Apple and in this case we're on the hourly time frame. I think the first thing that we need to show you is how to change between your charts because unless you only plan on trading or investing in Apple then you'd be pretty screwed otherwise. To do this you simply click on the search bar at the top and you'll be able to see how all the assets are broken down into their respective asset classes. I personally don't bother with clicking through those to find the asset I'm after, instead I just use a search bar and in this case let's look at USD JPY. As you can see once you've typed it in you have the different options of data providers who will quote you slightly different prices. I prefer to use O and A as I find this provides the most similarity to prices that I'm quoted from my broker, meaning that I rarely have to adjust my orders due to the differences between the two data sets. The best thing to do is choose on that works for you and stick to it because if you're chopping and changing you're probably going to find that you'll start to see deviation in your charting which will filter through in your trading. So now you know how to find the chart, it's time for the section that I'll call Pimp My Chart. This section is probably the bit that will be most interesting because let's be honest who doesn't love making their charts all pretty with nice colours. For the purpose of this video, I've reset my chart to the disgusting default settings. When you get to this point, you really have to choose which path you want to go down. You can either make your chart light, which is the same as what the screen currently looks like, or if you prefer the blackout vibe, you can switch your chart to dark, which you can do by right clicking and then clicking on the dark option. Now for me personally, I use the light setting, how there are a few advantages and disadvantages to both. With the light option, I personally find it easier and clearer to see price action, and it can be easier to see indicators such as moving averages on your chart. On the other hand, the darker background has one main advantage over the light background, and that is the reduced impact of the light background on your eyes when you're staring at the charts and screens all day. Really comes down to just what you're used to and what your preference is. When I first started out using Trading View, no one actually told us about the dark mode, and because of that I've just always used the light feature, and that's what I'll still use to this day. Let's run through what I do to set up my Trading View colour scheme. First of all, you need to go into the settings in order to access the customization features that TradingView offers. To do this, you just right click and then hit settings. As you can see, there's a few different options that we can choose from the menu, but we're really only interested in the appearance at this point in the tutorial, although I will give you a quick rundown of what the other sections cover in just a moment. Once you've clicked appearance, you should be able to see the different options that we can change, but the first option that we're going to change are the vertical grid lines. Once you've clicked on that section, you just need to go into the color tab and look for the white option which is in the top left. Once you've done that, you can do the same thing with the horizontal grid lines and then you'll be able to see when you're done, when you click back to the chart, you now look at a much cleaner image that looks like price action data on a clean sheet of paper. We aren't finished yet though, so right click and go back in your settings menu and this time instead of going to appearance, we want to hit the symbols option icon on the left hand side. This will take us into the area where you can amend our candles and how they're coloured on the chart. This option is split into two columns. The left column represents the bullish candles and the right column represents the bearish candles. Now you know which side is which, let's get these colours changed before I start to feel a little bit nauseous. For me, and really for you, there is no other colour for a bullish candle than FXE green. 
Now, sadly, Trade and View doesn't have the exact color on their color part, although I wonder if we tweet them enough, they will do this. But to do that, we actually now just need to add the color code, which is 309D91. Once you've done that, the FXE green color will be saved nicely into your favorites and you'll be able to use it whenever you want. Also, if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, or you just want to become a profitable trader, then make sure you like and subscribe because that is a prerequisite of trading success to like and subscribe to the FXE YouTube channel. Once you've done that, you can click on the option on the bullish side of the table and make that FXE green too. The next that I deal with is the bearish option, which we're going to set as grey. And for this, I use the fourth from the left on the top row option. This color won't add to your favorites, but you can always just use this video for reference if you forget to see this color theme as a template. You want to use this gray for both the bodies and the wicks, but not the borders. For the borders, we're gonna use a darker gray, which is again from the top row, but this time we're gonna use the third color from the right. Once you've done that, you can click off the sentence tab and your chart should look just like what mine does now. If it doesn't, then just rewind the tutorial and double check you haven't made any mistakes. Failing that, feel free to drop me a message on Instagram, I'll be more than happy to help you out. If you've managed to follow all the steps properly and you don't want to lose your sentence, then I would suggest saving the colour theme as a template, which you can do by jumping back into the settings menu and hitting templates in the bottom left corner, and then save as. Once you've done that, you can always just apply the template if your chart changes, or if one of your friends think they're funny and decide to change your colour scheme to something really useful, such as green and yellow, which will give you a headache in about 30 seconds. You might have noticed when you click in the settings tab that there were other options other than those that we looked at, but really there is only one of the tab that provides any real use. And even then I prefer just to turn off all the features in this tab and that is the events tab. As you can see, there are options to show dividends and earnings, which are about as much use as a chartered fire guard when it comes to trading Forex. So you can go ahead and turn those off. Another main feature that is actually sometimes useful is the economic events. For this, you might have noticed the little circles on the X axis of the chart. And these cycles are there to show you which economic events are affecting which country and which currencies. While of course you need to be aware of the fundamentals and news releases throughout the day, I personally don't rate this feature and I prefer to use resources which can be found on the forexfactor.com website to track upcoming news events from their forex calendar. We'll be covering fundamentals in a lot more detail further on in the 365 days of forex series and therefore stay tuned for those if you don't know your non-form payrolls from your consumer confidence reports. With all that in mind, you should have your chart set up looking fire, but now we need to take a look at the different tools that TradingView has to offer to help us when we're actually conducting our analysis and not just making our charts look pretty. The first tier tool category is Drawing Tools. This can be accessed from the second tab on the left hand toolbar. And if you click and expand that category, you can see all the tools in the Drawing Tools category. The first drawing tool that we want to use is the Trendline tool. This is probably the tool that you'll use the most when you first start trading if you're using a discretionary system based around trend lines and levels of structure. To get this tool on your chart, you need to click on the trend line icon, which is the top icon. And then once it's highlighted on the sidebar, you just need to left click on your chart and then your trend line will start. If you then left click again, it'll simply place the trend line on the screen. If you need to do any tweaks or amendments, you can simply click back on the trend line and then use the adjustment options at the top and bottom of the trend line to move it around. Once you have the trend line in place, you might want to change the appearance of the trend line. And to do this, thankfully, it's super simple. Just double click on the trend line and you can see the settings tab will open. And if you want to change the color, then you need to go on the first tab for style and then click on the color tab and just at the top of the box adjacent to where it says line. If you click on the color box, then you can see the different color options, opacity and thickness. I personally like to use the first or second option for my trend line thickness. And I would suggest if you're using higher time frame bias, using a trend line that is slightly thicker, as well as a fixed color for those lines, so you don't get confused when you drop them down on those lower time frames. Unless you want to get your trend line between two specific points, I would avoid using the coordinates tab, which only leaves the visibilities tab. This is a fantastic tab, and it's almost on all of the tools that I'll discuss in this tutorial. As we can see, by default, all the boxes are ticked next to the different time frames that you can view on TradingView. To use this feature, you can simply tick and untick the different time frames that you want to use and where you want to be able to see your drawn tools or indicators on. For example, if you decide you didn't want to see the trend line in the 30 minutes tab, you could actually just click on there and deselect it. And then if we just skip to the 30 minute time frame, you'll be able to see it's disappeared. The second drawn tool that you'll likely need to use is the horizontal line tool. This is the tool for marking up your levels in the market and is probably one of the tools that I use the most with my discretionary trading system. The customization of this tool is the same as the previous drawing tools, but an additional feature that I didn't mention on the trend line tool that is arguably a lot more useful on horizontal lines is the option to add text to your levels. Once you've added a horizontal level to the chart by clicking on the horizontal line icon, 
you need to double click on the line and then head to the text tab. As you can see, there's a simple text box and then the text alignment choices. For the sake of this example, let's just pretend that this is a monthly level and I can go ahead and then just type monthly into the text box, then click OK. And as you can see, the text shows on the right hand side of my chart where the level meets the price axis. As I said previously, all the other customization options, including the color of the line, thickness and opacity, as well as the line visibility are available with these tools. The last drawn tool that I use all the time for annotating my charts is the arrow tool. This tool is super simple and self-explanatory. Just go to the drawing tools sidebar, hit the drop down and select the arrow tool. Left click on the place where you want the arrow to start, which is the side without the arrow head. And then left click again on the place where you want the arrow head to end, essentially where the arrow is pointing to. Again, you can customize these arrows until your heart's content by changing the different arrow heads and line types. Whilst this isn't used specifically for technical analysis, the reason that I use arrows to annotate my charts is simply to add to my journaling, as it's pretty easy to forget why you're in certain positions if you've got multiple different confidence factors that you use in your trading system. By combining arrows and text annotation, which is something we're going to cover in a little bit, you can make your charts super easy to review no matter how long after you're reviewing your historical trades. Right, so that is the drawn tools section done to death. We can leave those now and you can use them as you will. Let's move on to the GAN and Fibonacci tools now. These tools are the third in the drop down and have a pitch fork icon as default. I don't actually use the vast majority of the tools in this drop down, but it'd be criminal not to mention the good old Fibonacci retracement, as it's actually one of the key foundations behind one of my first ever, really probably, decent trading systems that I actually used. To access the Fibonacci retracement tool, you need to go to the Gantt and Fibonacci tools icon and then click on the drop down and look for the Fibonacci icon. Give it a click and then you'll be able to place it on your chart. If we take this example here, we're going to drop from the swing high to the swing low. The tool before you've customised it will look something like Jesus' Technicolored Raincoat meets Roy G. Biv, but you can click it and start customising it to make it look a lot more pleasing to the eye and a lot more minimalist. Once you're in the settings, I like to change the colour of my trend line to FXE green because why not? And I like to turn all the levels off, apart from the 0%, 50%, 618, and 786, and of course the 100%. Once you're left with just those levels, I like to change the colour to black and remove the background before we then add additional levels that I trade around. Those levels are the minus 27.2 and the 88.6% level. If you want to find out why I use those levels specifically, we actually have a video again on the channel that I'll link in the description which explains that strategy. The final step is to amend the levels to percentages instead of having values and then move them to the right hand side of the chart so you can read them clearly as they're actually by default on the left. Once you've done that, you're good to go with Fib and let me know in the comments if you've got any issues with that and I can cover it in a lot more detail. So the next section is the geometric shapes category. And for this one, there isn't really much explaining needed other than a few top tips. The first top tip is using the brush tool to do some rough markups on your chart. I'd use the brush tool for marking up the highs and lows before I actually place my solid confirmed levels on the chart. To be honest though, this is just something that I'm used to and it's more of a habit because I've done it for so many years and really is probably a bit of a hindrance if you first start now, but if you find it useful, then let me know in the comments. The second and probably more useful tip is using the rectangle tool. This trick allows you to really improve your level placement if you're trading using support and resistance and aren't really sure where to place your levels around some areas that are a bit more wiki, for want of a better term. To use this tool, simply go to the sidebar, click the arrow drop down and select the rectangle tool. When you see your level, simply draw the rectangle from the bodies to the top to the wicks or the bottom of the wicks, obviously, if it's a level of support, and then draw it across the full length of the level that you would normally place. Once you've done this, use the horizontal line tool to draw a level through the middle of the rectangle, providing you with a median zone that you can look out for. Once you become good at naturally spotting these median zones, you probably won't actually need to use the rectangle tool, but when you're first starting out, it can be a super easy way to automate your system a little bit and remove a bit of that discretion. You can also use the rectangle tool if you're forecasting and want to mark out an area of interest where you're looking to maybe enter a position. However, this is only something I've seen other traders do and not something that I actually practice myself, so use that with a bit of caution. The next category is pretty self-explanatory. However, if I had a pound for every time that I've seen an unannotated trade in someone's journal, I'd be on the Forbes rich list. So yes, if you hadn't already guessed it, we're going to be talking about text tools. The first text tool we're going to talk about is just the normal text tool, 
which you can find by going to the big T on the sidebar, as you might have guessed. This is a fantastic feature for adding the reasoning for why you entered the position on your charts before you screenshot them for your journal. To get the text on your screen, just click the big T and then click on the chart. And then you'll be able to type whatever you want on your chart. If you really wanted to, you could type subscribe to FX Education. Just remember to do that if you haven't already done that. One top tip on this though is to make sure your text is big enough because you don't have to get your binoculars out when you're trying to read out why I decided to go full margin just before NFP. The second text tool, which is admittedly a little bit better for marking your charts up, is called the callout tool. And this is just simply because it's a bit more precise than using the text box. And I use this when I'm marking up my entry points or if I'm forecasting. I use this method to mark out an area of interest, the specific requirements that I need at the specific area when I'm going to enter a position. If you know where your stop will be already, then you actually calculate your position size and so you're just fully prepared and you've got all your entry criteria ready for when your position is satisfied and your criteria is fulfilled. Talking of areas of interest, we need to actually be able to measure how far away we are from an area or how far price has gone from our entry point and that is where the prediction and measurement tools come in helpful. To get this to on your chart, you need to click over the seventh category from the top, then expand the selection. Once you've done that, you'll be able to see the long and short tool. If you didn't already know by now, going long means buying an asset and hoping for price to appreciate, and going short means you sell an asset, hoping for it to go down. So once you've clicked on the long tool, you just need to click on your chart and the tool will appear on the screen, as you can see right now. Once you have it on your screen, you can double click on the tool and it will open you up to the inputs tab, which to be honest, I generally just leave alone, but if you really want to, you could input your account balance, risk percentage, and that will show you running profit and loss for that specific position based on your account balance. Now, as you can see, you have the profit and stop level. I usually use the visual tool to move my SL if I'm basing my SL on a FIB level, for example. However, this method of inputting your stop is extremely useful if you're using something like an ATR based stop that has a specific value. You need to make sure if you're typing out your stop loss in the inputs tab that you multiply your stop loss by 10 when you're entering because the values are actually in pipettes rather than pips. If you want to be all OCD like I am, you can actually change the appearance of the tool by going to the style tab. The main section in the style tab that I like to use is the show price labels and always show stats as this means your stop loss and pips and your target will always be visible and not only just when you hover the mouse over them. To use the short tool it's basically the same but instead of the profit section being on the top it's actually now on the bottom which hopefully should be quite obvious. Now the part that everyone's been waiting for, adding indicators to your charts. For this demonstration we're going to be using the exponential moving average indicator. To add indicators you need to click on the indicators and strategies icon and as you can see, you have several options. The main option that we want to use is the public built-in library. However, further in the series, we do mention other indicators from the public library, which are also useful as well as the volume profile. So in the search bar for this example, let's type in moving average exponential, which is just the long term for EMA. Once you've found the indicator that you're looking for, just click it and it should then appear on your chart. Once you've found the indicator that you're looking for, you can just click it and then you should be able to see it on the chart. 99% of the time the EMA will come in with a length of 9 and therefore if you need to change this you can just double click on the EMA itself on the chart or in the top left corner and it will take you to the sentence for that specific indicator and if you go in the inputs you can change the length of the EMA and the price source but I always just leave that to close. Like other tools in trading view you can also change the style in this case and I will usually change the colour and the thickness of the line which will come in useful when you're actually using multiple EMAs in your chart so that you don't get confused. You can turn the indicators on and off in the top left hand corner by clicking on the eye icon. And you can also see the pine script for them by hitting the brackets. If you want to see some more content on the pine script side of trading view then let me know in the comments as this is actually something I'll be covering in a few months with a little project that I'm working on with one of the other guys here in FXE. So now you know your way around the chart, you need to know how to add a watch list to your trading view account so that you can keep an eye on the assets that you're looking at, as well as those that you currently have positions in. To access the watchlist tab, you need to click on the three horizontal lines at the top right hand corner of the screen, and this will open your watchlist tab. I have cleared my watchlist, so yours should look exactly the same as this when you do that. To make a new list, you need to click on the arrow icon next to the text at the top that says watchlist, and then just go to the drop down and hit make a new list. Let's call this list Jack's Forex Pairs. Now, once you've made it, you can see it appears at the top where it used to say watchlist, and to add pairs to this watchlist, you simply need to click on the plus icon and search for the asset that you want to put on the list. Let's add UASD. And as you can see, once you've added it, it appears in your watch list as expected. Once you've got a few pairs in your watch list, the best thing to do is click on the left hand side of the pair and you'll be able to see you can use the colour coding system to categorise your pairs depending on whether you're in a position, forecasting a setup with alerts or not forecasted with no alerts. 
Using this system not only allows you to remain organized, but it also means that you can just glance at your watch list and you know exactly where you are, without having to go into each specific chart and remind yourself of where you are. And ultimately, this can save you a lot of time, especially if you're trading five or 10 assets at a time. I would also be inclined to split up your asset classes if you're trading across multiple asset classes, such as FX, crypto, and indices. But ultimately, just have a mess around with this and figure out what works best for you because not everyone's the same. Okay, people, so now we are nearly at the end of this short film about trading view. And yes, I will see you at the Oscars. But don't click off the video just yet as we're about to talk through the specific tool that will save you spending hours and hours from staring at your charts, waiting for price to move to your area of interest. If you haven't already guessed, I'm talking about the Trade and View Alerts feature. This is probably the main feature that allowed me and still allows me to trade alongside my full-time job and a degree because it meant that I could actually be away from the charts but still be notified when my entries are forming. So I sort of was always in the charts. I could talk until the world stopped spinning about the different ways that you can use alerts but realistically, everyone has different use cases for them and when you begin using them, you'll find different quirks but what I found really useful was being able to attach alerts to drawn tools. If you head on the chart here and grab a horizontal line from the drawn tools and mark it in our chart where we think price could go to, we can then attach an alert. It's super easy to do this and once you've drawn it in, you just need to right click on the line and then add alert to horizontal line. You can then change what sort of interaction with the drawn tool you want to activate by clicking the drop down below the asset name. If you then scroll down, you can add some information to the notification such as your stop loss and target values and your position size based on that data. If you have the trading view app on your phone, you can also get notifications to come through to your phone, which means that if you aren't at your computer during the day, you can forecast the night before and just wait for the alerts to come through and then place your trades from your phone when you're on the go. To finish off this insane tutorial, which has probably been one of the longest videos that I've ever done, apart from the backtest and beats mixes, which are linked in the description, we're going to quickly look at the replay tool. This tool will be covered in a lot more detail in a future backtesting video, but basically it's a tool that you can use to remove bars from your chart and then practice your strategy on historical data without actually being able to see what's going to happen. To get this tool in your chart, you simply need to click on the replay icon in the top ribbon and then you'll be able to choose where you want to replay from on the chart. Once you've done that, you can use the playback tool to play the bars, choose a new location and vary the speed at which the bars are played back. So guys, as I said, I'll be covering the replay tool in much more detail in the future, as well as some of the other features discussed in this tutorial in a bit more depth. And with that in mind, that about wraps up this trade and view tutorial. If you like this video, then be sure to hit the like button. If you think you know someone that will find this tutorial useful or you want to save it for yourself, then make sure you copy that link and keep it somewhere useful. As always, if you want to follow the 365 Days of Forex series, then hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you're notified when we upload another lesson, which will be in two days' time. Cheers, guys, and I will see you in the next one.